Good morning, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my presentation today is uh, actually I don't have a, a real title for it yet, but I name it Democracy and Decisions. Um, I think my presentation will uh, complement what Ajahn Tamada have said very well. Um, the major argument of, of my presentation is that uh, I think the biggest crisis maybe for the development of Thailand's democracy is uh, the distrust itself in the electoral process, like the word that Ajahn Tamada said is uh, discrediting democracy. The distrust in elections by uh, for many years, we have heard it repeatedly that democracy is not suitable for Thailand because uh, the rural voters are too poor or too ill-educated. They either sell votes or are victims of the patronage system and obey the instructions of a patron on how to vote. Um, and you might have heard uh, many, many uh, counter-arguments uh, what I intend to show you today is um, that the decision on casting a vote is very complex and involves not only the parties and the candidate and the money, but also uh, the various sets of expectations and moral standards. And what I will show you is based on uh, two surveys results that I have done uh, during the 2007 general elections and uh, 2011 general elections. So it's more empirical data to support my argument. And uh, I think uh, after that we can uh, decide whether Thai style alternatives that some of uh, the elite in society trying to uh, force on us is, is uh, a correct way to, to help developing the country. All right, I will uh, take you through uh, six major uh, points that will uh, help you understand more of what's going on. Uh, the first one is electors and elections. Let me show you this. Okay, this is a minor point anyway, but uh, this is to show you that why uh, turnout of elections in most parts of the world have been declined. But in Thailand, the turnout has decreased, has increased steadily since 1992. Actually, um, uh, before this 1986, 1987 is, uh, uh, has been in, in rise. And after 1992, I can say that water turnout has never dropped below 40%. And it showed that special circumstances like a crisis or protest actually had created a sense of moral enthusiasm among the electors. Uh, John Tamada used the word politi polit uh, awakened, politically awakened for me. The upsurge of water turnout can be explained not only because in uh, under, 2000, uh, under 1997 constitution, voting in Thailand is compulsory. But that's not only the uh, only one reason. It's also because of the fact that the majority of the Thai population have become aware that their votes, uh, they have the ability to influence the outcome of the elections and that this outcome directly impact their lives. And uh, that's why we have seen the, uh, the rise and rise of uh, the water turns out. Actually in 2011, the election, the, the previous one, um, the turnouts should have been higher, but because of some technical problems from the election commission. And that's why we have seen 75.03%. Uh, um, the second point, actually, the second point is the reduction of parties since 1996. Uh, this, oh, it's very hard to say, to see this. Okay, actually the table shows you that uh, there has been a reduction of political parties, number of political parties in the party system in Thailand since 1996. Um, here, I can say 1996, uh, the two parties in the government composed of 60 point, 
83%, the two parties all together combine six, more than 60% of the seats in the House of Representatives. So um, I argue against many uh, statements that the reduction of the party system in Thailand was the sole result of the 1997 constitution, but actually the trend has started since 1996. Uh, during that election, the Democrat Party, the Shark Thai Party, and the New Aspiration Party, all of them have composed more than 60% of the votes. And since then, party fragmentation of the previous era was no longer predominant. And of course, the effect has been uh, felt more under 2011, 2001 elections onward. The third point is uh, social, social uh, and economic basis with appear to link electors to party. Uh, like I told you, uh, the following information and data are, are the survey results based on the 2007 and 2011 general elections. The first one funded by Thailand Democracy Watch and the second one, the previous one, 2011 general, general election uh, was a survey funded by Election Commission of Thailand. And I would like to thank many of my staff who are sitting here that helped me uh, process a lot of complex uh, data. Um, one I want to show you is this uh, social characteristic of the electors of major political parties. I mean, in Thailand, we have a lot of speculations about who vote for who, why they vote for such a party or such a candidate, and, and I try to to figure it out by a survey uh, uh, findings. Um, According to, to my survey, the most outstanding difference uh, between the Pure Thai and the Democrat Party are in category of residential area. This might not come to your surprise, but uh, this uh, uh, confirmed that people who voted for the Pure Thai were mostly residing in the rural area. the rural area and uh, here, uh, urban and, and, and rural, right, uh, the Bangkokians voted more for the Democrat and the, the urban people also voted more for the Democrat. Um, if you look at Pure Thai and its rival, the Pun Jai Thai, uh, even when compared with the Pun Jai Thai, it is evident that the Pure Thai had a stronger support from the rural people, not the urban people. With compared with Pum Jai Thai. And uh, the new founded party, uh, LT here, Rak Patet Thai Love Thailand, uh, Ala Kun Chuwit, and had the, first much, the famous Chuwit Kumon visit. He got most votes from uh, the Bangkok people and also the urban people. Um, in relation to gender, you can see males tend to vote more for. Thai, whereas the Democrat got more support from the female, no doubt. Um, <laughs> with, with, with respect to age, with respect to age, um, this is very interesting. 55.7% of the voters aged 60s and over are uh, um, more voted for the Pure Thai. While this was only the case, only 47.4% that voted for or less that voted for Pure Thai. Huh? So the, the, the older generation are the big support for Pure Thai. As compared to the Democrats, uh, the biggest support group of the Democrats are among the younger generation, 39.7%. Uh, well, well, this might give some hope for the Democrats that they can uh, gather more support in the near future. All right. In terms of um, occupation, why only 34.9% and 26.1% of uh, people who are in um, farmers and workers voted for the Democrats? 66.6 .6 and 55 percent 
of the working class vote for the Pure Thai. This is very evident and this is uh, constant with um, the voting pattern uh, during the last election, 2007 elections. Uh, one interesting thing is about education. It does not come to supply the lower uh, level of ed education tend to work more for pure Thai, but I would like to direct your attention to uh, the people who have um, a master or bachelor degree. 50 percent, more than 50 percent of them vote for pure Thai. I believe most of them are sitting in this room. <laughs> Um, the fourth point is uh, a relationship between voters and candidates is based on money. I think this is the most controversial, most debatable argument in Thailand, whether they voted for money or because uh, something else. Um, I think the judgment about whether or not a relationship is based on money is often very different one because actually we cannot deny it totally, but at the same time I think who, those who condemn such relationships often rely on a superficial judgment or own speculation rather than detailed understanding. That's why I try to, to find out what's really going on. So the question is simple, whether receiving money or a payment and obligation for you to vote for that candidate and you can see, uh, I have done this in 22 provinces across the country in five regions, including Bangkok. Um, the overall is that only 10.1% say that it's an obligation. And why 89.9% .9 says it's no obligation, money is okay. We, we can't get money, we receive money, but we don't have to work for them. So this is um, an evident, and you can see that uh, as compared to different regions, Bangkok obviously say that uh, most of them say there's no obligation. But it's very interesting to see that the southern people is the region that say when you receive money, it's your obligation to vote for a candidate. And this come to my surprise because, uh, as we know, southern people are actually uh, better off uh, as compared to other people in other regions. So for me, I assume that money is not the only determinant factor in, in voting. It doesn't mean that when you are poor, uh, you say that you need to vote for whoever pay you. Because if you look at the north, and the Northeast people, only 7.5 and 7% respectively say that it uh, should be the vote. One more interesting thing is that um, urban and rural people, it's a surprise that it's urban people who say when you receive money, you have an obligation to vote for them, more than the rural people. More than the rural people, the urban people seem to, to uh, well, uh, feel a lot more gratitude than the rural people when it comes to money, right? The number five is who influence your vote. Uh, this is to argue against that uh, patronage system is um, dominant factors in uh, deciding the votes of the Thai people. Um, the question is who influence your vote? And most of the answers we got is oneself. It means I voted because of myself. I make my own decision. 97.8% say it's important. One, citing oneself as the most important factor. And uh, if I also ask what is the most important, I mean, I ask uh, are these categories who are important and which one is most important. Uh, like I said, oneself, um, uh, they make their own decision is important and most important. Family is the number second, friend come as number third. Uh, canvasser is number fourth. Well, I this show that we cannot deny that canvassers, political canvassers are still very important in the Thai political domain, but 
I believe that more and more traditional figures like uh, village head, local politicians, uh, government officers, I only have two minutes left, all right, uh, become less and less important in making decisions and people tend to rely on themselves more. Uh, the other f uh, factor that I would like to draw your attention is the movements of the red shirt and the yellow shirt. 17.3% uh, said that they are important, but only 1.1% said they are most important. So we cannot deny the relationship between the movements and, and, and voting a decision. And uh, the UDD or the red shirt affects their decision 67.3%, whereas the PAT affect their decision 24.8%. Right? Um, the last point is, uh, strategic voters um, I I've done this to check if um, most of the peoples most of the voters in Thailand have voted constantly uh, between district and proportional representation system and the results show that in many areas they split their votes it means they voted for the district for one party and for the PR system for the other one party. This is, uh, for me, this is show that they, money doesn't, a dominant factor, they voted because they are complex of relationship and, and parties as well and other factors. So this show you that uh, there are actually uh, about 69 districts uh, in a uh, form 375 district in Thailand that people split their votes and uh, most of mo most of them they voted for the district for a candidate why they give their vote for uh, either pure Thai or the Democrat in a proportional representation system um, reasons for electing a candidate is most of them cited honest Honesty. Protect the monarchy comes as the second uh, important. So they are not only because money, you see a party banner come as uh, the fifth, and constituency work or um, it easy to access, uh, uh, keep in touch come as third. So these are combinations of uh, reasons of vote. You see rewards and payback actually mean little to them. They come as uh, the six in this category, which it may also count. So I see money, um, what I'm trying to say is that the Thais uh, told that impoverished and morally vulnerable voters focus on only one thing, that is money, but uh, the results show that there's more than that, they also carry smart, skill, password, and their all, uh, own image and qualities of the candidate that count. Um, okay, I go through this quickly. Most favorite policies war on drugs. Uh, this is not come to a surprise. Minimum wage suspended. Uh, healthcare student loan. Uh, the one interesting point is that rice price guarantee actually belong to the Democrat. It's a Democratic Party policy. Why rice market belong to uh, the Pertice policy? So actually, people prefer the Democrat policy is on this issue than the Pertice policy on the same issue. But when they vote, I think the only one part, only one policy doesn't count. They have like a combination of evaluation of the policies that mean people are more rational and they calculate a lot. Um, for conclusion, and the third type that holds the relationships between politicians and voters are motivated solely by money ignores the complexity of human relationships and motivations. As the survey shows, contrary to the mainstream will, the Thai people in many rural constituencies act as strategic voters. They vote for a top competitor to maintain their passionate relations, but at the same time, they're also casting their ballots for the symbolic power of their policy preference. In other words, voting behaviors is based on a multi faceting relationship that there should be various systems to evaluation. And also, 
uh, I think, like Ajahn Tamada said, that um, that's a tyranny of majority. I mean, in the parliament, and also the fear of being permanent minorities for some parties and some people. My proposition is that the best way to avoid tyranny of the majority in the parliament uh, there's a condition of permanent minority. We have to create a state of accommodation, not compromise, but accommodation of numerical minorities by institutionalizing electoral competition, not demeaning it. We have to institutionalize it, not demeaning it, I emphasize. Concurrently, what we need are better protection of civil liberties, implementation of rule of law, and reduction of political violence and impunity. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your kind attention. And if you have questions, I'm willing to ask them.